Hello and welcome to a brand new season of the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. We're here at Donington Park for the opening rounds of the championship. Before racing, Andy McEwen spoke to the current title holder. So Stephen Roberts then the reigning champion in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. You're the man to beat really at the moment, aren't you? Well, it appears so from last year, but um, we've just had qualifying. We've not had the greatest of runs and um, I've got a bit of work to do today. So yeah, I'm the man to beat, but there's a few beating me at the moment. So, uh, but we've got the races to come, so I'm just going to get my head down and get the best, res re guess for best results I can. Um, we had the same situation last year where we weren't the fastest for the first couple of races, so we'll just go away and work at it. You managed to win every race here at Donington last year and you actually hold the lap record on the Grand Prix circuit. So is this a place that you seem to have a bit of a uh, bit of an edge on over the competition? Um, I wouldn't say that. I think last year we, well, we had a bad qualifying last year. We st started on the second row, so I'm hoping we can do the same this year and, and get up the front again. But, you know, it's the first qualifying of the of the season, so um, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. So we just aim to get some good points and, and, and start to build from there. A lot of uh, new drivers coming into the championship this year. Who have you got your eye on to be, uh, to be nipping at your heels? Um, well, I think the drivers from last year, so Stuart Boyce, David Drinkwater, Cacaldi's down from Scotland as well, he'll be quick. And then I think there's the new guy, Jonathan Davis, who's, a, who's got a good karting pedigree. He's obviously going to be quick. I mean, he's brand new to car racing, um, but, you know, give him a couple of, couple of races and he's going to be right up there. And he's obviously going to be a top quality driver to win a British karting championship. So Richard Proudlove then, Sales and Marketing Director of PRG Trailers. Now, PRG Trailers is a new sponsor for the uh, Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Uh, so first of all, tell us a bit about the business. Right, well, we've been making uh, racing car transporters now for like 25 years. Uh, we started supporting Steve Roberts and Phil Roberts uh, last year in the Compact Cup, just supplying them a trailer. And uh, now we've started sponsoring the series as well. Uh, just We really like the championship, it's very, very clean racing. And uh, you know we'd like to bring some trailers into, into the 750 Motor Club and uh, just push PRG trailers. Excellent, and you're a fan of motorsport yourself then? Yes, yeah, we've followed motorsport for many years now. We're, um, probably 15 years uh, with Piers, Piers Grange from PRG, racing his uh, Mark II Escort and his Sierra, and um, he races in the historics and different things like that. So we're just sort of broadening our horizons throughout the motorsport world, really. Cars heading out onto the track then for the first of three races today in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Such is the size of the entry, it's been split into three. Each group will race twice, so first up it's Group C versus Group A. And it's the first of seven meetings this season. We start and finish the year at Donington, but in between we're at Brands Hatch, Snetterton, Castlecombe, Rockingham and Silverstone International. So the grid lines up with Alex Dew on pole position for this race. He was second fastest in qualifying. Next to him on the front of the grid is Stuart Voice. The second row, last year's champion, Stephen Roberts, and Dan Kirby next to him. He sponsors Steve Roberts. The third row, Declan McDonnell, a newcomer to the Compact Cup, and Mike Tovey on the outside of him. And the fourth row, it's Farrar Darver and James Nut Brown, another rookie as far as the Compact Cup is concerned. So we've had the green flag at the back, the race gets underway then, and it's a good start by Stuart Voice on the outside of the front row. Alex Dew from pole position makes quite a poor getaway. Steve Roberts has made good starts around the outside of Donington Park. Before now, does he go into the lead of the race? It's level pegging between him and Stuart Voice as they head around the first corner then. It's a 13 minute plus one lap race, and we've got 30 cars on the grid for this first race of the weekend. Down through Hollywood and Crane Curves they go for the first time then. It is Voice that's got back ahead of Steve Roberts now. I think that's uh, Alex Dew that slotted into third position. Possibly it's Declan McDonnell in fourth. Dan Kirby there with the white car with a day glow livery as well. He was trying to make a move. There's someone that's gone off right at the back of the field as well. Try and pick up who that was in a moment. Oh, and drama involving one or two cars then. I think that car the station on the other side of the track is the number 71 car of Adam Reed. Oh, and more problems on the way up to McLean's. There's lots of incident on this first lap of the race. 
I think Dan Kirby has been involved in that. Everyone else making away from the scene, apart from one car, though, which may well be that of James Nutt Brown, who was racing in the Clio Championship last season, having raced in intersteps and T-cars before that. Red flag is out, no surprise, because we've got that car blocking the track at McLean's. And this is how it happened. We're on board with Neil Roach, car number 81, the driver that was seventh in the championship last year. Watch what's unfolding up ahead, though. Puff of smoke, that's Dan Kirby spinning around, goes around and it's James Nutt Brown that collects him and Neil Roach in actual fact has to go through the gravel to avoid all of that. And I don't think he's picked up any damage but uh, it's a close run thing for Neil Roach. This is the view from Simon Roach, Neil's brother, this is what happened down at the old hairpin. A real smoke screen that Simon had to make his way through there. up towards the incident at McLean's as well. What did he see of that? It was a little bit further up the road because Simon started right at the back of the grid having had problems in qualifying and he just chinked to the right of the James Nutt Brown car there. So we are going to get a restart. It's going to be over a slightly shortened race distance. 11 minutes plus one lap and almost a full grid. Two non-starters though, Dan Kirby and James Nutt Brown. They were the two drivers involved in that incident. Lights out, and it's a better start this time from Alex Jubal again. Stuart Voice makes the best of the start. And he goes into the lead of the race then. Steve Roberts not quite so quickly away this time. He's not alongside Stuart Voice, and Dew might even manage to hold on to second place here. With Voice, uh, with Roberts and Dew level pegging effectively as they went through the first turn. That's number 34 as well towards the back of the field. That's John Watt, one of quite a few drivers new to the championship this season. He's only done track days before. This is his first ever race. So it's Stuart Voice with a clear lead over Alex Dew as they turn through the old hairpin for the first time. There's the green number 13 car of Farad Darva. Turning their way through left-hander at Schwantz Curve up towards McLean's for the first time. It's due there in the number three car, denoting that he finished third in the championship last season, ahead of Steve Roberts, who's continuing with this tradition of number 56, even though he was the championship last year. As for us, Dave there, number 14, with the uh, police style livery on the side of the car, heading up towards McLean's, and uh, someone in the gravel there, early doors, I think that's the 37 car of Jim Carolan, who had a something like a 40 year layoff from racing, having raced in the mini in minutes up until the early 1970s. Down to Fog yes, it's for the first time then on this restarted race. We didn't get this far at the first attempt on the 2.49 mile Grand Prix circuit this weekend. A car going slowly there in the background was possibly number 47 Owen Hunter, the Saxmax champion from two years ago. The driver that's in his second season of racing in the Compact Cup. Now there is Roberts side by side with the fourth place car, which is Mike Tovey there, number 35. Tovey's got the inside line for Goddard, and he goes back through. So Tovey goes to third, but look, the car gets sideways on the way out of Goddard's corner. Does this give Roberts a chance to get alongside him again as they head along the weak cross straight towards Redgate corner for the second time? Yes, it does, so Roberts goes back to third. It's voice leading, due second. Third is Roberts, and it's Mike Tovey, number 35, in fourth position then. The driver that was the 2011 production BMW champion, next autograss racer as well in the past. Further streaming down towards the trainers and the old hairpin for the second time. A bit of debris on the circuit there that Steve Roberts has just run over. Hopefully there's nothing there that will damage the Marangoni tyres that these cars all run on. tight then for second and third positions at the moment Ooh, and an instant further back someone heading through the gravel backwards and that looks like it's number 26 which is Mark Morton the loss adjuster from Hertfordshire it's a car that he built himself he started to demolish it himself again by the looks of it Simon Roach is who we're on board with now he's got a lot of work to do having started from the back he didn't make it out for qualifying it was allowed to start the race because he is experienced at the championship. This is his third year now. And he goes past the number 51 car there, which is uh, Mark Skeggs. A 
driver that raced Ferraris in the 1990s for a couple of years. Making a return to racing this season. So Simon Roach making some progress up the order here. Well, Steve Roberts really does have his hands full here, trying to keep Mike Tovey at bay. Mike Tovey has proved in production BMW news that he's no mug at all. He's from Bristol, a motor technician by occupation, and he's a very decent driver as well. Look at them side by side again as they go into Goddard's, but Steve Roberts has the inside line. Holds on to third position once more, but Mike Tovey carrying good speed out of the corner, looking quite determined there. He's going to try and challenge Steve Roberts as they go along the weak off straight. In fifth position, I can see, is the number 43 car of Declan McDonald. And sixth at the moment, which will be number 13, which is Farad Darver. He turns his way through the right-hander. There you can see number 81, Neil Roach, the driver that went well last year, started back on row seven, so further up the grid than his brother Simon, but still further back than he would have liked. As Toby has lost ground there to Roberts. Can he gather himself up for another challenge, I wonder? Making his way through in fifth place was Declan McDonnell. And then it's that 13 car of Farad Darva with just behind him the number 99 car of Nigel Walcott, a driver making his return to racing after an eight-year layoff. He last raced at Master MX-5 in 2006. But he has champion experience in the past. Actually, for Rose Darby there, heading up towards the right-hander at McLean's. Problems for Steve Bailey, I'm afraid. Number 44, the man from Cuffley in Hertfordshire, the chief executive officer. He's racing Formula V as well. He's out of the race with uh, a retirement mechanical problem, I would suggest, with that car. Andrew Cunningham, a former Royal GB racer, making his way out of the old hair, but he gets very much out of shape, though. Has he kept hold of it? Not sure that he has. Uh, no, he's sideways on the grass. He's spinning around. Fortunately, he's uh, not involved anybody else in that. He's had that incident all on his own. Now he will rejoin, he'll get the car pointing in the right direction again, but he's lost an awful lot of places there. Qualified on row six of the grid, so he was well up the order. A big disappointment for him then. Side by side here, down the Craner curve, Steve Roberts has closed in on Alex Dew now. This is the fight for second position, and Roberts has got his nose in front as they head towards the old hairpin. And he's done it. Steve Roberts goes through to take second place away from Alex Dew, who had qualified his car and started the race on pole position. He was running in second place, but Roberts, having escaped from Mike Tovey, now up to P2. And Alex Dew, the 28-year-old from Bampton in Oxfordshire, the automotive and motorsport training, profession, uh, training professional, has got a lot of work to do now to try and get back ahead of Steve Roberts that we saw on so many occasions last year. That's a near impossible task. Out of coppice, down the exhibition straight. Stuart Voice, you can see in the distance, has a very good lead here. There's a fight headed by the number 27 car. Well, it was. He loses ground. Simon Roach is among the cars going through. Also heading through is number 83, Matt Fazy as well. 27, by the way, is uh, Jonathan Davis. A newcomer into racing, the 18-year-old student from Market Deeping. And off his cross on the back of his car, he was going pretty well. Qualifying on row eight of the grid, but losing two or three places there as this race now enters its closing stages. Alex Dew's not given up, has he? He's still right in the wheel track of Steve Robinson as they head through Goddard Hairpin once more. They go through with uh, Stuart Voice just ahead of them to start their last lap now. And don't write off Mike Tovey from this either because he's not too far behind in fourth position either. Then it's Declan McDonald in fifth in his first season of racing since 2010 when he raced in Formula V. But Roberts, the former Formula 4 champion and the Compact Cup champion from last year, he's in P2 at the moment. Further back, it's Farad Darva in sixth. Looks like it's uh, Arjun Walcott there in seventh position. The ex Ginetta champion and also the MG Owners Club champion as well. About two decades ago now, but he runs wide. 
that's uh, eight years worth of race rustiness that he's trying to work off there and it will give the next driver through a chance to close in that was Neil Roach now McLean's goes Stuart Voice then the Union flag livery on the side of his car looking very smartly turned out indeed the standard of preparation of all of these cars is really exceptional these E36 compacts from between 1994 and 2001 look absolutely stunning for this opening round of the championship. I don't think anyone's going to beat Stuart Voice now, but second place is still not settled, is it? Over the crest on the exhibition straight, Alex Jew pulls out, looks to the outside line, goes back into the toe. He's going to have another go at, Stuart Ro uh, at Steve Roberts at Fogarty's. No, he's not. So, two more opportunities for him to try and find a way through. Number one is the Melbourne hairpin, number two is Goddard's hairpin. What can Alex Dew do about Steve Roberts? He's going to launch his car up the inside. No. Is he saving his powder until the final corner then? Steve Roberts will be taking the defensive line into Goddard's. Of that you can be sure. Car's pretty much in the middle of the road there. And I don't think Alex Dew, the LED lens that entered car, is going to be able to do anything about it. But Stuart Voice it is that takes the win in the opening round of the... 2014 Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Second place just goes the way of Steve Roberts. Third is Alex Dew. Taking fourth position is Mike Tovey. He goes across the line now, but uh, the victory goes to that man, Stuart Voice, in car number 21. Second in the championship last year for the man from Villa Rookie. He'll be looking to go one better in 2014. Let's have a look at the results then. Stuart Voice it was that took the win by six seconds in the end, but less than four tenths between Roberts and Dew. Tovey, McDonnell and Darver completed the top six. Looking further back down the order, Neil Roach did get ahead of Nigel Walcott on the last lap to take seventh. Bryce Greenwood was, was ninth and Simon Roach from the back of the grid made up 20 places to complete the top ten. Stuart Voice then, winner of the first round of the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. You got the better of both of the starts, pulled away, made it look easy. It wasn't easy, it was just hard work, just never give up, I don't, I just keep on pushing. It's, uh, it's hard to work out there, it is, I mean, especially when you're leading it, because you can't uh, put a foot wrong, but thanks to all my sponsors really, like AEW Track Support for getting me in first position, he's done a lot of work for me, and uh, Momo UK, and Brown and Geeshan, yeah, so it's much voice, helpful, really, voice tune as well, so yeah. So, uh, Stephen Roberts, then, second place, you had a great fight throughout most of that race with Alex Dew, though, you must have enjoyed that. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. A um, bit different from last year, and um, don't get me wrong, I'd take last year over the, the start of this year, but no, it was a really good fight. Uh, lots of people have found some pace over the winter, so we've got a bit of work to do, but that's what it's all about. It'd be boring if I came back and won every one, so I just want to want to get out there and do some hard racing that's what exactly what that was brilliant Alex Dew third place finish he made the podium I know speaking to Stephen Roberts then he really enjoyed that scrap he had with you though uh, yeah well, it was uh, it was certainly close towards the end I thought I may um, sort of just grab it at the end if I you know sort of realized what I was stronger on the last lap but all credit to him covered the bases and uh, we went home pretty much nose to well nose to tail great race made a few errors learned a lot from it um, and hopefully in the next race we'll go one better or maybe two better Group C versus Group A up next and it's our first chance to see David Drinkwater who was the fastest man in qualifying who'll be on the outside of the front row for this one with Stuart Voice the winner of race number one taking up pole position. Second row has got Daniel Kirby, damaged his car has been repaired, and Alan Kakati, the Scottish compact driver. Third row of the grid, Mike Tovey, who went so well in race one, and James Cook, he had a good qualifying session. He was 11th in the championship last year. James Nut Brown should be on row number four, next to Michael Gray, another Scottish competitor, and completing the top 10, Owen Hunter and Eric Zaleski. On board with David Drinkwater then, he's on the outside of the front row. The red lights go on, and out they go. You can see there the speedometer. You can see his position on the track as well. Already up to 70 miles an hour, but it's not good enough to get ahead of Stuart Voice, who takes the lead of the race then. This massive field of 31 cars in this case, 
heading around Redgate Corner for the first time. Let's hope it's in a less eventful opening lap than we had to the earlier race because there was a little bit of incident and damage in that one. And uh, the drink water there was side by side with Stuart Voice heading down the crane of curves. Well, that was brave. Stuart Voice just about held on though. Oh, and a spin and there's contact. That's Mike Tovey involved. He went so well in race one and James Cook there on the far side of the circuit from our camera, car number 20. So the two drivers that started the race on row three have both had a moment there, and that really has split, split the pack up a little bit behind Daniel Kirby. Look at that gap back then to the fifth place car, which I think is going to be James Nutbrand in number 88. There's Andrew Cunningham, number 23, being passed by the uh, 16 car, I think that was, of Eric Zaleski, who starts on the outside of row number five. Well, it looks like it's going to be any one from four for the win, such as the gap back to the fifth place car. Stuart Voice it is that leads at the moment from Drinkwater. And then it's uh, Alan Kakodi in third, and in fourth place it's Daniel Kirby. So the four drivers from the first two rows of the grid fill the first four places at the moment. I think everyone has just about got going again after those incidents down there with the old hairpin, which is good to see. Up four with very little to choose between them, but it's not a, a good exit from the hairpin there for Stuart Voice. That allows David Drinkwater to get alongside him. And Drinkwater's got in front. David Drinkwater has the lead of the race, but Stuart Voice has the inside line for Goddard's hairpin. He goes back through and can Alan Kakodi follow as well. On board with Drinkwater now. He's back down to second, certainly. But is he third? Where's Kakodi? That's the question. No sign of him yet, so possibly David Drinkwater, who's his excellent pace on occasion in the compacts has got second place secured well he has for the moment at least and leave it at that nothing is guaranteed in the safety devices gas shocks compact cup you can see that Daniel Kirby has just fallen off the back of the first three cars a little bit now remember his car had to be lashed up after the damage that it sustained in that instant at McLean's in race number one Perhaps the setup on that car isn't quite right and he qu can't quite live with the top three drivers and the pace that they're setting. So Voice looking to do the double this weekend at Donington Park, having won race number one by more than six seconds. Looks like he might have a tougher fight on his hands in this one. Towards Coppice Corner they go. All of the cars, of course, run gas shocks and Marangoni tyres. It's the standard gearbox that the cars have as well. Down towards the Fog DSs on the Grand Prix circuit this weekend, of course, where the lap record is still held by Steve Roberts, a 158.14 he set last year in the opening race today. Steve Roberts did a 158.29, so 15 hundredths outside of that mark. David Drinkwater's quite late on the brakes there into the Melbourne hairpin. Look how he closed up on the back of Stuart Voice's car. Drinkwater from Farnborough in Hampshire again gets a good run out of the hairpin and gets alongside Stuart Voice on the outside line though for Goddard's corner. The number 77 car is going to be in the lead. I think it might be. Yes, he's taken the apex there. At Goddard's, he's had the choice of line. So it looks like David Drinkwater has made it into the lead of the race. His third season of racing in the Compact Cup. More skirmishes going on behind. Again, we've got Simon Roach burning from the stern. 30th to 10th in race one. Can he improve on that in this contest? So Drinkwater now establishing the lead of the race with Stuart Voice down to second, but Alan Kakodi still there in third position, the Scottish base driver. An occasional races in the English Compact Cup and has always been at the sharp end when he has done so. He's having a go now at Stuart Voice for second place. Stuart Voice in car number 21, the Land Rover engineer in his third season of racing. Simon Roach getting past there, the number 51 car, which is Mark Skeggs, the builder from Hertfordshire. Challenge here. This is Mike Tovey coming back through the field after that early spin. Oh, and a, there's an incident just ahead of him, and that's number 26. And I'm afraid that's the second spin of the day for Mark Morton. He joins the track though between McLean's and Coppice Corner, but not 
We thought he's lost quite a few places. Another lap completed then for David Drinkwater. He leads now, and look, he's pulling away a little bit from Stuart Voice in second place, who's starting to keep an eye on his mirrors because Alan Kikodi is right behind him. In fourth place still is Daniel Kirby. Still in fifth place, it looks like uh, James Nutt Brown. And then way up towards Redgate Court, you can see Kevin Denwood there in the middle of shot with the blue and orange car. He's a bit further back down the order than we saw him last season in car number five. He finished fifth in the championship last year. He's just ahead of number six, which is Josh Harvey, a newcomer to the compact cup this season, as so many of the drivers are. Absolutely fantastic to see so many brand new drivers to this championship this year. And Josh from uh, Wiltshire is a mechanic and the team is entered by the family garage. There's Neil Roach, number 81 first meeting was 2013 he'll manage to write off his 2012 car so we'll be hoping for improved fortunes at the start of 2014 from a 19 car is at the head of that little group that's Michael Gray from Edinburgh the 20 year old student who four years ago became the youngest ever driver in the Scottish Formula Ford 1600 championship at the age of 16 had a good run in the Walt Hayes trophy as well a couple of years ago did Michael Gray a bit out of shape there was uh, Kevin Denwood. Making their way past the exhibition centre, down to the Fogarty S's. Michael Gray's line being followed there by Kevin Denwood and Josh Harvey's next up and it's quite a gathering of cars behind that uh, leader of that group now. So this is the fight for fourth backwards. Zaleski, I can see, was uh, involved there as well. There's the number 17 car of James Wynne Stanley, who's the features editor on Practical Performance Car Magazine. Oh, oh dear. I'm starting to feel a little bit sorry now for Mark Morton in car number 26. Now he's got two wheels in the gravel. It's a rear wheel drive car, of course, the BMW. Oh, reverse, possibly not what he wanted. And he managed to get out of that. the 50 is at the head of this group that's the Greg Barlow car the company director from Lancashire second season of racing now for him James Cook in the 20 car is trying to improve on his position after that early off but oh and who's that going off that's Daniel Kirby from fourth position he spins around at Coppice Corner so that's bad news for Daniel Kirby. It's allowed Michael Gray through into fourth position now. The Stuart Voice is kicking up the dust there with Alan Kikodi still behind him. Have a look at uh, James Wynne Stanley, who started this race in 14th position and he's just improved a little bit on that. He'll be pleased to note. Ahead of, him, ahead of him, I should say, is uh, Kevin Denwood. Ahead of him is Josh Harvey, who doubled a little bit in Formula 4 1600 uh, down at Castle Coombe last season, his local track. But looking forward to enjoying his racing in the Combat Cup. This is the final lap of the race then, and Drinkwater still in the lead of it, but Stuart Voice and Alan Kikari still fighting it out for second place. I think that Stuart Do Voice is. Just about going to do it though. Cody trying to go around the outside. That's not going to work. So David Drinkwater comes out of the hairpin, goes up to the line, and he takes the checkered flag to win the second race of the day in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. He's denied Stuart Voice the opportunity of doing the double, and he's now set up the possibility that he could do that himself. So David Drinkwater. A very pleasing start to the season for him after and a slightly erratic at times 2013. Here are the results then. Drinkwater winning by a second and a half. Less than three tenths between Voice and Coddy second and third. Michael Gray, Eric Zaleski and Daniel Kirby completed the top six. Further back, Matt Smith took seventh, Josh Harvey took eighth, Neil Roach ninth, and Kevin Denwood completed the top ten. Fastest lap and the lap records jointly to Alan Kakodi and Stuart Voice. 
David Drinkwater, then winner of the second race of the day for the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Your first race of the season, though. Dream start to the year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely dream start, even with the noise. Um, yeah, it was good to get pole this morning. And then obviously winning that. It was a tough race. Just had to push Stuart along quite a bit. So the three of us made a little break for it, but it was absolutely brilliant in the end. Stuart Voice, second place in that race. You won earlier on, second in this one. Not a bad day's work. No, it's not a bad day's work. It was really uh, entertaining racing out there, but uh, we just couldn't catch the uh, front runner. We, just, we got in the lead at the start, but we just suffered with a bit of traction. But we just, uh, we could, uh, I could get him in a few places, but not in total. But it was good. It was, had a good battle with uh, third position. Me and him were tussling all the way through. Alan Kukoddy then, you made the podium on the first race of the year for you. Must be pretty pleased with that. Yeah, delighted. The car's only just done its first run this morning qualifying and managed to get a podium on its first outing, so delighted. Trying one step further in the next race. Yeah, well, you've got that second race coming up later on. You're going to be with David again. Going to be you two fighting at the front in that one, or have you got your eye on some of the, maybe some of the newcomers this year who are going to be nipping at your heels? Well, the guys on the outside of the next race will be quick as well, so just going to have to see if we can get away clean and just try and keep pulling away if we can. I'm here now with Nigel Olive Jones. Now, Nigel, you are competing this year in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what's behind you there, this hospitality unit. I believe you had something to do with that as well. Yeah, yes, I did. My uh, wife loves feeding people, and this for her presents an excellent opportunity. Um, this is our first year in Compact Cup, and we're running three cars, one for me, one for my daughter, and one for my son-in-law proper family affair then. Now you haven't uh, tested the car before the season have you so this has been a bit of a baptism of fire I'd imagine. Uh, we've had our fair share of issues this weekend but we've managed to overcome them and we'll be out in the next race. Uh, so what are your, your goals for the season then realistically as a newcomer coming into what is a hugely competitive series? Uh, if we could finish in the top 10 any of us we'd be very happy indeed. <laughs> Excellent best of luck with that throughout the season then. Thank you very much indeed. Cars on the grid then for the final race of the weekend for the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Will David Drinkwater do the double or will we have a third different winner today? Alex Dew is next to David on the front row of the grid. Second row is Alan Kikardi and Stephen Roberts. Third row, James Cook and Declan McDonnell. Fourth row, Michael Gray and Farad Darver. And on row five, Eric Zaleski and Nigel Walcott. Green flag waved at the back then. 31 cars ready for the off here at Donington Park on the Grand Prix circuit. Out go the lights and a good start there by Alex Dew from the outside of the front row. I think he's got a slightly better start than David Drinkwater and immediately cuts right across in front of him to prevent David Drinkwater taking the right line for uh, the first corner. But an even better start by Stephen Roberts from the outside of the second row of the grid. He did this last year, of course. Got into the lead of the race from the outside of row two. Has he done it again? We'll wait and see in just a moment. Yes, he has. Brilliant stuff from Steve Roberts to get into the lead of the race. He's in car number 56, the man from Huntington, as Alex G tries to get second place away from David Drinkwater there. Looks like Alan Kukoddy is fourth. James Cook is in fifth position. We'll be hoping for a happier race on this occasion. You can see the seventh car going through as well, which is uh, Matt Smith. Up towards the right-hander. Roberts leading almost side by side for third and fourth places though see how that one shakes out in just a moment everyone looks to have got through McLean's safely this time that's the number 72 car of Stuart Place from Norwich an oil field engineer in his third season in the Compact Cup so Roberts leading but Drinkwater has gone with him and is challenging down to Fogarty's for the first time a gap back to the third place car we've got uh, Kakodi I think ahead of uh, Jew just at the moment a bit of dust having been kicked up in the background there so someone I think has run wide at Coppice Corner drink water to the outside of Steve Roberts at the Melbourne hairpin will he get the cut back and try and go through maybe he'll mount an attack at Goddard's hairpin he's alongside Roberts now but on the outside for the hairpin the left-hander how's this going to play out 
Drinkwater might do this, you know. He's got halfway alongside. He's still alongside Steve Roberts as they come off the corner. A bit of mirror-to-mirror uh, -mirror contact, and I think Drinkwater's done it. Yes, he has. Great move, that, from Drinkwater around the outside of Steve Roberts at the Goddard's hairpin. So it's Drinkwater now leading. Roberts is second, and third looks to be, I think, Alex Tew ahead of uh, Alan Kakodi. James Cook there in fifth, and it's a gap back to Declan McDonnell in sixth position. And Denwood, you can see, going through a shot there with the blue and orange car. In actual fact, it's uh, Kikodi in uh, third place, I think. Nope, right first time, it's uh, Alex Dew. Two very similar liveries on those cars, uh, both black and red with uh, some sign writing diagonally down the side of the car so it is due in third place ahead of uh, Kakodi away a little bit now from uh, Cook in fifth position Kakodi challenging Dew who goes to the left hand side of the circuit now does Kakodi I think he might do him here he's got a good run out of Coppice Corner he'll get alongside he'll be on the Wrong side of the circuit though for the next corner, which is the left-hander at Fogarty's. I think Jew's going to hold on. But look how Drinkwater's got away. And Roberts has fallen back into the clutches of that third and fourth place battle. Towards Melbourne hairpin they go then. And a challenge for second place here as Jew got ahead of Steve Roberts. He's going to be three abreast on the exit of the corner now. It looks like Jew has done it though, he's up to second place. In race one of the day of course, it was uh, Roberts that vanquished Jew in the late stages, but here Roberts has gone back down to fourth position. Or has he? Look at the better run out of Goddard's hairpin. There is uh, Stuart Place, just ahead of the Scott Lawson car, number 84, he spins. Oh, and he makes a bit of contact with Scott Lawson there before spearing off onto the grass. Manages to well, sort of rejoin. Get there eventually, I promise you. There he is. I don't think Scott Lawson was too badly delayed, but look at this. It's side by side for second and third here between Dew and Kakodi, and it's Dew that is still in second place. So Kakodi couldn't quite do it. Now he's going to be under attack from Steve Roberts here, who carried a bit more momentum out of the old hairpin. The two of those are side by side now as they head through the left-hand which once curve. That windscreen wiper on there briefly for Steve Roberts. He's got the inside line though for the plane's corner. And I think Roberts does get third place back. Yes, he does. Excellent racing this in the Safety Devices Gas Shops Compact Cup. I have to say, at times last year, the racing was a little bit stale at the sharp end of the order, but it's so much better in this first meeting of the season as Kikoni was trying to come back there at Roberts as well for third place. The spinner is number 22, a newcomer. This season, that's Neil Hobden, the shop manager from Southampton. And his supporters club that are on the banks here this weekend. They'll be disappointed with that, I'm sure. But they'll be carrying on cheering him home. Through fogged yeses. They go. You can see James Winston is uh, number 17 car in the middle of that shot. There's Roberts now under attack once again from Kakadi. You in second place, having got away a little bit now with the drink water even further up the road. Oh, and someone going wide there. Pick up who that is. It's possibly the Josh Harvey number six car that uh, was on the grass on the way out of the Melbourne hairpin there. Over the line goes David Drinkwater, and so does Alex Dew. Then Roberts, then Kikadi, then James Cook. It's still Declan McDonald as well in uh, sixth position. Mighty Mini and low cost champion. The fight for third and fourth positions still rages on though. And through the crane occurs. We've seen some side by side action at almost every part of the circuit during the course of today's Safety Devices Gadget Compact Cup rounds. There's two rounds being contested here this weekend in the 14 round championship, which continues at Brands Hatch in four weeks' time. Which wants curve up towards McLean's. Look in the background. I think James Cook is now coming under a little bit of pressure from Declan McDonnell. And the next car through looks to be, I think, Matt Smith actually. There's 
that. In fact, there's uh, the number seven car of uh, Matt Smith doing battle with James Wynn Stanley. Turning their way through Coppice Corner now, then it looked like the number 27 car of uh, Davis. Some cement dust there on the track. Laid to dress oil, put down in a previous race here. But it's not really on the racing line, so it shouldn't be a problem to the uh, BMW drivers. Robert still has Kakodi nipping at his heels. It's Farad Darv, isn't it, that's having a good race here and makes a move and takes the place away from James Cook. So Darva goes up one position. He now is into sixth spot. Seventh is Cook, who's got cars ganging up on him now. Has he got a problem with his car, I wonder? 16 in the middle of that shot is Eric Zaleski. Number six is Josh Harvey. Kevin Denwood is in there as well. So, down towards Redgate corner they go then. For our Darva having made good the, the opportunity. And he's capitalised on that. Zaleski there I can see in the number 16 car. He had top five finish in the earlier race, which he will be very pleased with. The Rover engineer from Redditch. Down towards the old hairpin. There's fantastic battles all the way down the field in the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. There's Matt Smith about to get ahead of James Cook, who is heading down the order at a rate of knots at the moment. He must have a problem with that car. It's not handling right or something. Maybe it's a little bit down on power. All the engines are 1.9 litres, 16 volt M44 engines with the Superchips Control ECU as well, but it's got sort of a problem of some description. Losing places hand over fist. It's down the exhibition straight they go. So it's uh, Darva, and then behind him is the car to make its way into the Fogarty's S's now. Nice green would I think it was in uh, 66. Turning their way through the Melbourne hairpin. Matt Smith and Josh Harvey side by side there. Smith in the black car, Harvey in the white car has to slot in behind Matt Smith there. He's not going to give up though, isn't Josh Harvey? He's attacking as they go around the left hander at Goddard. Cars 5, 7, and 6 all together there. And the group is Kevin Denwood, who was fifth in the championship last year, the foreman from Southwood and Ferrers. Now he's under attack from Matt Smith in the background there. Smith on the outside line for Redgate Corner. Not able to make that work, so he stays behind Kevin Denwood for the moment at least. Still, this battle continues. Blue car fight for a place just outside the top six at the moment. There you can see the 66 car of uh, Bryce Greenwood and number 16, which is Eric Zaleski. battle as well. Greenwood who was ninth in his first race this morning. So down the exhibition straight towards the Fog TS's once more. Turning in is uh, Farad Darva there. Queue of cars behind though. There's Win Stanley you can see. Number 17 the practical Cool performance car entered machine. Denwood taking an unusual line here because he's trying to make a move on Zaleski, I think that is. And he goes through, and it looks like Matt Smith is trying to follow him. And they're going to make it three or four abreast as they come off the Melbourne hairpin now and head up towards Goddard's. Who's going to emerge at the front of this strap? It's going to be Denwood 
but Greenwood follows him through, does he? And out of the race goes number 72, Stuart Place, he's stuck in the gravel, he's not going to get out of there. Well, we're on the final lap and I can tell you that from the uh, battle up towards the sharp end of the field, we've lost Alan Kukoddy now, so it's uh, Drinkwater leading, due second and Roberts in third. We're still looking at this battle though, involving Kevin Denwood, and it's for sixth and seventh position with Matt Smith just tucked in behind him there. Up the road you've got Farad Darva in fifth as we look at 27, which is Jonathan Davies who won the Super 1 KGP karting last season. Making his uh, first foray into car racing in 2014. Here's Drinkwater then. It looks like he is going to do the double. He is a couple of seconds clear of Alex Dew that is a long way back to Steve Roberts in third position. Up towards the left-hander at Gollard Hairpin goes David Drinkwater then. And he is going to be one very happy Compact Cup driver. He takes the chequered flag in the third race of the day for the Safety Devices Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Second place goes the way of Alex Dew. He's 2.3 seconds of drift. We're still waiting for Steve Roberts to come across the line. He does so in third position. But the day at Donington Park belongs to this man, David Drinkwater, who will go back to Hampshire tonight, leading the championship standings. So let's have confirmation of the results then. The win going the way of Drinkwater by 2.36 seconds. Roberts was third, Declan McDonnell was fourth. In fifth place for our Darva, Kevin Denwood completed the top six. Further back, Matt Smith took 7th position in the end, Eric Zaleski 8th, Josh Harvey 9th on his first weekend in the Compact Cup, 10th going the way of Bryce Greenwood. Fastest lap went to David Drinkwater, but no lap record for him this time. David Drinkwater then, double race winner today at Donington Park in the Safety Devices and Guy Shocks Compact Cup. Good day's work for you. Yeah, hard day's work, I must admit. I'm absolutely knackered now, but absolutely loved every minute of it today. That second one, you, you say, wasn't quite as easy, but you certainly seemed to be a bit more comfortable out in front. Yeah, it wasn't easy. I had a, a bit of a rubbish start, I must admit. Got sort of swamped a bit, but managed to get back through. Had a bit of a tussle with Steve, I think, through a couple of corners and Alex. But Alex kept me, kept me on it all the time. He was in my mirrors, so I couldn't let up for the whole race. So, most enjoyable. Well, Stephen Roberts reckons you're going to be one of his closest contenders this year. It bodes well for the rest of the season, not just for you, though, but the competitiveness of this championship. Yeah, it's very, it's very close all the way through the field. You can see when you, you watch it on TV. You know, wherever you look, there's, there's always some kind of race happening, whether it's at the front, the back or the middle. So yeah, it's brilliant for the championship, I think. An excellent start to the season for David Drinkwater. Good luck next time out. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, I wonder if David Drinkwater will be able to add another couple of wins next time out at Browns Hatch in four weeks' time. Join us there for now from all of us here. It's goodbye.